In this sequence of notebooks, I'm going to review a data set that I got from this website, vmreports.com, give you an overview of what that data looks like from the original website. There's a company that um, plots the electrical power load versus time, and they make that available as a display here and for CSV download. So you can get a copy of that data yourself and play with it, which is what we've done. I already have the CSV here, and what my goal is is to recreate that plot, um, but for a larger time scale. So on the original website, I didn't get much choice about how big the plot was going to be and, and what the granularity was. So I want to be able to manipulate the data myself. I'm going to start by importing pandas, and then with pandas uh, loaded, I'll do a quick preview of the data. I'm going to use a cell magic, which is the exclamation point here. And that exclamation means that the following text is going to run directly on the computer rather than in the notebook. Head is a command that's available on my Mac, and it shows the top of the file. And then it shows the top of this file that I've downloaded. So I'm going to execute that, and I get back the first few lines of the file. This is a bit of a preview to make sure that it really is a CSV. Now that I have confidence, I'm going to take that CSV and load it into pandas. So I store the CSV into a variable called dframe, and that's what I'll be working with for the rest of this notebook. To validate that the data frame did load in properly, let's use dframe.head and look at the column labels and the index. My first complaint here is that because Pandas saw that VD was on the left side and there wasn't an associated header. It assumed that that was the index for the data frame. So I'm going to re-index the data frame to be a little bit more sensical, like what I'm expecting. To do that, I will use uh, the range command, which outputs a range of values between like 0 and the number of entries, the number of rows in this case. So that gets me back to a, a data frame index that I'm happy with. The next thing I want to change, just to make this a little bit more intuitive, is to alter the, the name of the columns. I'm going to change to the time of measurement and demand level for the first and second columns, which is more easy for me to understand in my head. So there's less cognitive load about what is, what is HDR. Now I've just changed it to time of measurement, which makes more sense to me. Once I've got two columns of numbers, my next intuition is I want to plot this and see what this looks like. So let's just see how MATLAB plots uh, a line graph of time of measurement versus demand level. This is, again, to our goal of reproducing what was on the web page. Taking the default view from matplotlibs, uh, uh, the pandas use of matplotlib is a line plot. And what we see here doesn't quite meet up with our intuition. So on the bottom axis, the time of measurement, that doesn't look anything like the times that we're used to. And you've got these uh, horizontal lines that connect these spikes. So this is strange. Um, those might not actually exist. So usually the way that I figure out whether there's a false representation of the data is to use a scatter plot. So there you don't get that line connecting various points. So when I switch to a scatter plot, what I see is, in fact, that those horizontal lines were just sort of connecting uh, adjacent points. Um, and so when we remove the horizontal lines, now we're just left with these spikes. That's the actual data points that we're plotting. And again, this still doesn't look correct. So now we have to figure out, like, why is this time axis not the way we thought? turns out that we probably need to convert the time format that was presented in the original file. So remember that the values that we're plotting, these time values, they're not quite what pandas is expecting. They're, they look like integers or strings. There's a, a library called datetime, which we can use to alter the format of this value into a, an, an 
entry that pandas will be able to work with. So there's this handy guide of a web page, the string format time. Um, and that tells you basically like if you have some like year and month and day, what is the format that string format time is looking for? So here I can sort of use my human intuition and guess like these first four characters, those are probably the year. And then the next one, next two characters are either the month or the day and hours, minutes, and seconds. So that's how I'm encoding what that string should be represented as. So I'm going to take this first value here, these first characters, and, and just manually paste that into a string and see if the conversion produces what I expect. So now that I've validated in this cell that I can actually per perform the conversion from a string to a date time, now let's put that uh, same effort into converting the entire column of time measurements. When I run that cell, uh, this, this command fails. I wanted to convert the entire column to a date time, and that doesn't work out. And if we scroll to the bottom of the error message here, we see time data 2000 does not match format. So there was something wrong somewhere in our, in our column of values. So one reason that that probably didn't work out is because I realized I had an integer. Remember that what we were trying to do was take this string and convert it to a date time. But in fact, pandas doesn't think that this is a string at all. Right? It's actually thinking of it as an int64, int it's an integer. And so I realized that I have to convert uh, from an integer to a string, and then I can convert that string into the date time that I was looking for. Now again, that fails. So now I've, I've tried to correct the error, and now I've got it, something else going on. So it doesn't like time data and all this other good stuff. So that's a bunch of error message if we scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's review what we got. So this is not what we wanted at all. So something went wrong and the format doesn't work out. What do we do? I'm gonna to switch to a new notebook. Uh, this is a notebook that I've learned lessons from. I know there's something wrong with the data. Let's go back and just start fresh. So to, to review, I've got pandas, I've got a CSV. I can load that CSV into, into pandas. And I already know from my previous notebook that the first index, first column should not be treated as an index. So I'm going to specify that the index column is false. That wasn't what I'd intended at all. So now it's basically moved the first column into the first uh, data column and, and made an index. And so like, that's not at all what I want. The other thing that's probably screwing pandas up is the fact that it has two column headers and three data columns. So let's retry this with uh, skipping that first row. So when I skip that first row, this is closer to what I wanted. Right? So I'm still not using VD as the index, and I'm skipping that first row. And because I've skipped the row, then it doesn't try to make a guess about what uh, column headers there are. So with that in place, then uh, I noticed that the first data row was assumed to be the column header. So now I have to specify additionally that I don't have a header. Uh, I'm just going to ignore the values that are on the first line. And then I can manually set those to be the things that I intend. So now I've got a data frame that I can work with. Now remember, in the previous notebook that we looked at, we have uh, the time of measurement as an integer, and that's not what we wanted. So we know that we have to apply, uh, uh, make that, that column a set of strings before we do the conversion. So now we've got time of measurement as a string. And just to preview, that doesn't actually change how it looks in pandas. Uh, so we have the same values, but the data type has changed. So let's apply our date time conversion to the time of measurement 
with that column being a string. Unfortunately, that still fails. So something is happening. Right? One method that I uh, observed over on this Kaggle website, uh, and I'll show you a quick preview of that, was they're going through a bunch of data and they're cleaning up these timestamps. And so I, I read up on that and I saw that there was a method where I could coerce all the errors. I could like force them to uh, try to be over, override them. Now that seems to work. So I've got, I've got a, a new column here where I can convert the time of measurement into the date time strings that I was looking for. So that looks nice. Scroll over to the bottom. We notice here that the last entry is an NAT, not a time. So that's interesting. What was the original uh, last line in the CSV? I'm going to use a, a cell magic command exclamation and tail is a command that's available on my Mac. And then I'm going to look at the bottom of this file. So when I look at the bottom of that CSV, I see that there's a line that says FTR 2000. Now this is the root cause of all those problems I've been having. Right? The fact that when I try to convert this entire column into timestamps, it errors out. So it basically said, ignore that. And, uh, and I see that the reason was because it didn't know how to handle this as a date time. All right, I'm going to move on. I've learned a bunch of lessons. I'm going to incorporate them into my new notebook. So again, I'll start fresh. I'm going to import pandas. I look at the head of my CSV. It is all this mess. And so I have a bunch of things that I've learned from the previous notebook. I want to not use the index column. I'm going to skip the first row. And now we just learned that we should also skip the last row. And we should ignore the headers. We're going to say header none. So when we look at that, this is the data frame cleaned up with all of these commands that look very magical. But in fact, it's just a bunch of lessons that we've learned from our previous analysis. Now we can set the column names as we want. And let's look at the bottom of that notebook again. Here, because we, at the bottom of the data frame, we look, we, we dropped that last uh, line, skip footer, which is why we no longer have that that value of 2000 down at the bottom here. Again, because uh, this is a set of numbers, pandas thinks of it as an in integer, an in64 value. So we're going to have to convert that column to a string and then also uh, to a date time. So we've now converted the time of measurement to string and then specified that the format should be in year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. All right, so that's a lot of work to get us to what we think we now want to plot, which is the time of measurement versus value. Woohoo! This is a plot that looks pretty reasonable. It's a scatter plot, it's well connected, it's continuous, and it's got these periodic oscillations. Now, one bad thing about this is that the, the timestamps in the bottom here, they all overlap. So let's fix that. We can rotate each of the labels to be uh, the, the day. So that's handy. And we notice there's some oscillations, right? So let's, let's figure out why is that. It might be the fact that uh, if you look back in June of 2018, the second and third are weekends. And right? so there's lower demand for electrical power on the weekend. And maybe this is time when people are sleeping around midnight. And this is like the morning and then there's a little lunch dip. And then like in the afternoon, people use more power. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, this is the power load on a weekend. So we have a pretty good understanding of what this data is showing us and the patterns that we're seeing. I'd recommend if you don't believe me, go look at your calendars for 2018 and see what days of the week these were. All right, so we've learned a bunch. Let's throw it in one final notebook and see how simple this notebook looks once we've learned all these lessons. Again, we'll import pandas and we're gonna specify where we got the data. And so we've got this CSV and there's a bunch of extra sort of like things that look so sort of strangely wise, right? Like how, how do we know that those exist? Oh, we learned those elsewhere. 
so we can cl quickly get to the, the data structure that we want. And then we have to convert our time of measurement into a string and then convert that string into the date format that we want. Now we can import matplotlib and plot everything. That's exactly uh, a very short notebook that gets us right to the plot that we wanted, but recall all the work that we did to get there. It was a lot of work to get this relatively simple notebook of a few lines of Python code. This might be 15 lines of Python to get this plot. But remember, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that usually people don't present.